Hello. Hello, we're British This Theatre, and this is our podcast. I'm Bethan. And I'm Dan. And we're going to talk about how we made a musical. Just to start us off, uh, we are we made British This Theatre on our own. We are the founding members. And our latest production, Jesus Camp the Musical, was our first exploitation into writing a musical. Exploitation. Yes, <laughs> we didn't exploit anything. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't done a musical before. In fact, it was a completely different vein to what we usually wrote in. Um, but the content allowed us to kind of transition to, into it quite nicely. And it was something we'd wanted to do for Forever. a long time. Yeah. So writing a musical, the first thing you've got to decide is what is your idea for a musical, obviously. Yeah. Is it something people are going to be interested in at all? I mean, or how can you make it interesting to people if you're not sure it will be? <laughs> yeah. And is, should it be a musical at all? Yeah. We went, we, we went through a few ideas before we got to Jesus Camp trying desperately to force ideas to be musicals because we wanted to do one so badly and sometimes it just can't be done it's always if it can but it it doesn't fit right with what you've what you've written or what you're thinking about yeah some things are meant to be musicals and some are just not yeah (laughs) so first off you've got to find your idea and make sure that this is the right um theatrical device yeah to to be telling your story um so we decided on Jesus Camp, which is uh, it's actually a documentary, an award-winning documentary about a Christian summer camp in North Dakota. That's right. Uh, yep. And um, it's very extremist, evangelical, and it's, it's a documentary, so... Did I say that already? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a documentary about, um, basically, the long and short of it is um, indoctrinating children in a very extreme way. Uh, to the point where they're basically telling the children that they should be an army of Christian fighters, essentially. Yeah. Um, it's pretty shocking, especially, you know, you think about it happening all over the world in different countries, but really it's happening in, in, in Western countries too. You just don't see it as obviously. But... And it's quite a dark, uh, serious kind of documentary. Uh, but we wanted to take that a bit and twist it on its head and do something totally different with it. Still the same subjects, the same ideas the same sort of message as the documentary has but just in a more accessible upbeat, way for a stage yeah, yeah lively sort of musical comedy format mm-hmm. um so well that takes us on to the start of the show it's obviously we went for a musical comedy so the next thing you need to think about is what sort of music is going to drive your story forward so we thought upbeat sort of cheesy yeah uh, much in the vein of shows like Avenue Q, Avenue Q, Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon, Little Shop of Horrors, all those sort of uh, poppy, fun, yeah, fun, upbeat shows. That yeah. a lot of them are very dark still. Yeah, it's got it's it's it made it easier to ex- access the darkness as well though through that kind of upbeatness. Yeah. Um you can kind of you can you can say some shocking material and still kind of get away with it at the same time and not absolutely blow people's heads off. Yes, yeah, not as dry. Yeah, but it's also almost more shocking because it's because it's like you're doing it in a funny way. It kind of almost gets the sh- to the shock quicker because you're like, wow, it's like this is really scary stuff actually. Yeah, you can lure people into a false sense of security and then hit them with something a bit harder. Yeah. And also the characters we play are to 12 year olds yeah um so it suited their age range to be in a more kid-like sort of musical theater style yeah um we should probably point out as well that i wrote the book for this show Mm -hmm. as well as playing chad foster in it and bethlehem wrote the lyrics as well as playing lucy skipper um we have another member of the team who we brought on board for this show which is winston ead who um wrote the music for the show. Uh, I'm sure we'll have him on this at some point talking. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but, uh, oh, that also leads us on. <laughs> <laughs> Seamlessly. <laughs> Onwards to uh, the next thing you need to do is form your team yeah. to write your show. Once you've got an idea that you think can work, you know what sort of style you're working, why you're working that style, you need to make your team. Yeah, and surround yourself with the people who are going to get the job done and do it well. Yeah. And you can't do it all yourself. Well, some 
Some people can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people can't. Yeah. And it's best, you, it's the thing about knowing your strengths. What can you actually, like, if you want it to be successful, are you actually the right person to do each job? It, like, it's it's fun to want to do everything, but there you have to, comes a point where you're just like, actually, there's going to be somebody who can do this better than me and let them do it. Yeah. So it's, it's quite nice to be able to not stress about the things that you can't do. Uh, for us, well, Bethan has musical background, but not to the extent that you need to be able to write a full show musically yeah uh but very good at writing songs and lyrics so that was obviously her job for lyrics i'm a playwright so it made sense for me to stick to the book (laughs) i don't have a music background at all yeah and then winston was the final piece of the jigsaw um he's a pretty amazing pianist (laughs) yes very good pianist and um but they need to be people you can work with because it's quite a long well you end up spending a lot of time together, if not together, communicating with each other. You will be talking to each other. If you want it done in a timely fashion, and we managed to um, power through and get it done in eight weeks, and the only way to achieve that is to be in contact with each other all the time, pretty much. Yeah. It's, you just have to just keep talking to each other. And it's, it's really important that you can have a shared vision of the show, that mm-hmm. someone understands where you're coming from, that you're all on the same page, yeah. because you have to, at the end of the day, make a show that, forms together as if one person wrote it yeah um, although that's rarely the case it needs to look like that and yeah feel like you that. all have to know what you're so it all matches up but you're all working towards the same ending um we, ways we did that um how did we get that together well i think we're quite lucky that we all sort of got it from the start yeah um, and then we threw some things around like we tried different ideas. It was there was a lot of like trying out things and then just being like it's not quite getting to what we wanted. Um, also using things that are already out there, like the other shows in the same sort of vein. Yeah, we used a lot of look at this song. This song's this is what we were going in the for. same sort of thing. Uh, just so everyone knows the style, everyone knows what we're going for is yeah. like this and. It sounds like we just stole the whole show. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> we, we, we made sure we always knew that what direction a song needed to go in and um, found ways to just make it really clear to whoever was we were talking to, this is this is where we need to go with it. Um, yeah, so whether that was sending Winston music, whether it was me saying to you, look, I need, for this part of the story, I need, we've got the music for this song, but this is what I need the lyrics to get across. Like, yeah it needs to move the story in some way yeah towards this direction um how did you find that what do you you uh you telling me how <laughs> telling you <laughs> telling me what to no yeah it's, telling you what to do i found that obviously um it's really important when cuz the music and um, and the lyrics really in most in pretty much all musicals you can go through a lot of story just in one song and you should, um, hence, and you should. hence yeah. why it's a musical yeah. and not something else. Um, so I needed to be really clear on A, what was happening in the script, and B, what was going to happen afterwards, so I knew how to get from A to B. So yeah, that was that's definitely the way to go. Yeah. It's very much uh, give and take all the way through. Yeah. Uh, someone has to tell someone what they need, and they someone else needs to tell someone else what they'll need from someone yeah. else and where they can move things you have to be you have to be like really honest as well so like it's if you want to get results that you're happy with you have to there's been times where with like like with the lyrics you've you've said to me like it's fine it's working it's not we haven't got the right tone here I, or i'd say to winston this is this music's good but it's not enough it needs to be more like and you obviously have to trial and error and like try bits of script and just be like actually this doesn't make enough sense or it didn't go in the way that you wanted it to yeah it needs to flow so you have to be like, willing to cut things yeah, some things, things some things just come and some things take a long time like songs like uh i'm bad you and winston spent a significant amount of time writing yeah. that song and rewriting that song and it went through several it was hell <laughs> <laughs> large developments it yeah. was not it, what not it ends as process. is not what it was to start with not at, at all. all but then other songs literally were written in like half an hour I'd have like the lyrics ready and we'd just like whack it out and that was it done yeah I'm so bad I'm so goddamn bad that's right I'm bad so bad I'm so bad I'm so goddamn bad that's right I'm bad so bad baby Jesus son of God don't you hear yourself Chad Foster it doesn't take a genius to guess you're on a path to destruction and a life on crystal meth bring it on 
on, Lucy. You see, my parents gave me two a good thing about the show, story-wise, was that um, it may not be good for all things, but we kept the story quite vague, um, which allowed us to play around quite a lot with ideas and story. We weren't shoved in one direction, though. I think planning is quite... Well, planning's always good. Yeah. But when you're working with three people, for us it was very helpful to have the movement. We had room to play. Yeah, we and... had room to... So it wasn't... It's not so much vague, but it was like we we kept things really open as far as, as for a long time so that we had the opportunity... So it was easy to... If we weren't happy with the direction we were going in, we could go in a different direction and it wasn't like oh, how the hell do we go that way? Yeah, we, nothing needed to be forced to go in a direction because there was no particular direction to start with. But no. we, we obviously developed it into a place where it does have a strong A to B to C narrative Yeah. Uh, for the show. But we kept it quite open to allow us to play both musically and story-wise. Yeah. I think it just depends on I think it depends on the subject matter as well because because of the because there's it wasn't we weren't taking a story which was like it was all you know this is how it was. We had sort of it's more just it's set it's set in this camp and anything could really happen so we could we could try lots of different ideas as opposed to you know a story where it's just like telling a journey of someone Yeah, like like it's cuz it's original form is obviously a documentary. It doesn't uh it's more of a study of a subject, which yeah. we um, have taken it away from. Yeah. Uh, but we always start it in the vein of it being a study of something. Yeah. Um, something that was quite interesting in the early stages, this was probably when we were at the Edinburgh Fringe last year with our other show, Man Enough, uh, we started to think about doing this as a show. Um. And then this sort of came about when we got Winston on board was that we dramatically changed our idea character wise. Yes, we did. I forgot about that. Yeah, very early, quite early in the process. But yeah. we, when we've been talking about it, we'd sort of discussed having two characters because there's obviously it's just us in the company, and we uh, we planned to go down the route of having two characters for it. Um, we were going to have Lucy Skipper, which is quite strongly based on one of the characters in the documentary. It's mm -hmm. not hard to see who. <coughs> who's a very Christian character, very good um, Bible follower. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to have a character, for me, that was um, a geek. Yeah, really a... geeky. Kind of didn't have any friends. And the idea was like they both, they both were quite lonely children who had sort of found... A kind of family format and friendship format because of the religion um, that they were both interested in. But also his his big thing was that he was torn because of his uh, love for science yeah. and how obviously that doesn't go with his Christian beliefs and that. Um, but one of the biggest changes, which I think probably really brought the piece together, was yeah. that we decided quite early on that these characters weren't different enough. They had there was not enough to spark with them. They were both the underdog. They were mm. both... Um, they... Neither of them would have ever stood up to each other. No. They, they, you wouldn't be able to... They wouldn't be able to back themselves up. And it, you couldn't... It was so... It was difficult to get any... Of a, more of a story out of them. That yeah, there was no conflict to no. their characters particularly. Not... Nothing outward. Yeah, and no, nowhere to go really. They they couldn't they couldn't cause anything to happen to the other. Really, it was just no. they were just a bum, bundled along, bumbled along, and nothing would have really. Yeah, so what our one of our big turning points was to change the geeky character to uh, badass. A, yeah, a badass character of Chad Foster, who's been sent to military school by his parents. He's been kicked out of military school. He's Really bad kid. No structure in his life whatsoever. No, no he just structure. does what he likes, doesn't care. And now he's been shipped off to uh, Jesus Camp to... As a last resort, basically. Yeah, a last resort. they cannot straighten this kid out and it's there just... Um, and that was such a huge shift, but it made... I, I think it made the entire difference. Yeah, because now you had two characters that could properly spar with each other. Yeah. Because 
he doesn't believe in any of this at all. Mm. She absolutely does. You've They're got both, both in totally different places. Yeah, and you've got both of them. You're, you're seeing both, like, two sides of the story in extreme ways. You've got one who is so devoutly, obsessively um, religious and a kid who's absolutely just got no interest in that and is all he wants to do is cause trouble. And it... it made Lucy a much stronger character mm. because she had to stand up to him. She had to be a lot more forceful with her own views. Yeah. Uh, which gave us a lot more to work with. And consequently, story-wise, it gave them a lot more of a journey. They could both change, which they do. They both, by the end of the show, they're both <clears throat> almost polar opposites to how they started. And they're yeah. both damaged in their own very specific way mm-hmm. <clears throat> because of each other as much of as... The because camp. of the yeah. camp, um, obviously because of the camp and what they're learning while they're there. But if if those two characters hadn't met, they, they wouldn't end up damaged in the same way. Yeah, it's because of the light they throw on each other that is the issue. Yeah, definitely. Another thing we had to get round was obviously it just being us two in the show was. Um, is it enough? Obviously, it's a big camp. There's lots of kids. Is it enough to just have two characters? Will this actually work? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there's a lot we can't show just being two of us. Do we multi roll it? Uh, that, was that was one of the questions. But we decided against it because multi rolling is nightmarish well, unless we... you've got the time to commit to really getting it. So right. so right, yeah. It can yeah. go so badly wrong, especially still with two people. You think, oh, if you can multi-roll, you can do like, but actually, it can you still with two people. That's just as hard as in some ways. And you can end up with distracting your focus for the mm-hmm. show onto you're focusing on so many characters that not none properly get developed. And also, as actors, you're focusing on lots of different characters that you miss the actual point of your main characters. Yeah. Uh, so we decided that two. Two characters was always going to be a risk. Mm-hmm. One that I think paid off. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad. Yeah, I think way. I think it worked really well. One of the main issues was how do we show <clears throat> what's going on in the camp? Yeah, without obviously having without a bunch of children. <laughs> yeah. So all the show all focuses around in between camp activities where these two characters meet up. Yeah, so you've got they they're coming back from having been to one of the big meetings or. Um, Things like that, basically. Yeah, so it's about how they are reacting to that. Um, yeah, and you see the changes that it's having on them and <clears throat> the changes that they're having on each other as well. Yeah, but I think we still kept a sense of very much the action is still where you're looking. You haven't... Yeah. I don't think you come out of it feeling like you've missed anything, I like s- you wanted to see it, because yeah. I think you get what you need to. Yeah, I think it, I think it still has that feeling that there's a big camp that's going on around them and it's just these moments in between with them that's like you're seeing like it's like you're getting this little private kind of viewing on what these two characters are doing in the meantime. Yeah. Um, I think one of the good ways we got around it was to have... We've got news reports in the show. Yeah. Voiceovers that... Um, <clears throat> from a Christian ra- local Christian radio station that doesn't approve of the camp for various reasons. Yeah. Um, and that brings in mostly in scene changes it brings yeah, almost like a narrator but um, yeah and it, and it kind of that's the sort of more level-headed angle obviously you've got two characters who are quite extreme in there in in opposite directions he's the sort of the um the radio guy is kind of a bit is saying kind of what the audience are probably thinking um and being their voice and but he's still christian he's yeah a, he is he's christian, a christian character he's, he's not as he's not an extreme he's not an extremist christian he's a lot more well what you would most people would define as a normal Christian. Yeah. <laughs> He's a lot more level-headed about things. Yeah, for sure. And a lot more adult. Yeah. Because obviously we just follow children. Yeah. He's the adult voice of reason. Yeah. That they, unfortunately, the characters don't get to hear. No. <laughs> it probably would help a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he fills in the gaps on what's happening in the camp. Yeah, so you hear His about... views on it, the world's views on it. Yeah. Um, so you do get this idea of what's happening all around you um, without actually having to, without us actually having to show it. Yeah. Um, which is good as well because it keeps the focus on what's actually happening between these two characters, but you're still aware of the other things that are happening on around it. Yeah. It just fills in the gaps mm-hmm. a bit better, makes things a lot more rounded. Yeah. 
while still allowing it to just be us in the show. Yeah. Because we are the stars. <laughs> it's all about us. <laughs> CNJ Christian Radio. Today we'll be talking about a new brand of Christianity. An evangelical summer camp recruiting kids to an extremist and, quite frankly, scary set of beliefs. Would you expect your child to lay down their life in the name of Christ our Saviour? We'll be talking about that and more after this short break. So then we went on to do, we finished writing the show. Mm-hmm. We went on to do it at the Lewisham Fringe at the London Theatre uh, in New Cross. Yeah. Which went very well. Yeah. It was very well we received. We did two shows there, didn't we? Yeah, we did two there. Um, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> it went better than I thought it would, actually. It was yeah. very, very well received. But, yeah. Um, I wasn't sure we were quite there no we felt like we we felt like we would get we we almost had it but we just said it wasn't i think that we wanted to we weren't it was really nice but it needed to have more bite and like we knew yeah, it was too nice we were we always it's one of those things because it's quite a sensitive subject matter like everyone religion is always going to be you know we didn't we didn't want to we certainly never wanted to, to really offend people we wanted to make people question things but we we are worried was are we going to really freak people out are they going to be like they're going to feel really uncomfortable like too uncomfortable to actually enjoy what's happening and or to understand it but we actually found the opposite we could we realized that actually we can go a lot further and people want you to um yeah and uh, yeah people wanted it and we realized that um with very little editing it could be a show to be taken into schools yeah which was never in a million years the route we wanted to go down not at all so we needed to bring out the darkness more. Yeah. So that wasn't the case. Yeah. Um so we did a we did a small performance and we took some feedback from the audience. Yeah. We did some forms and questionnaires and lovely creative things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um to get feedback. Bureaucratic. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very mixed feedback yeah we had a very mixed age range yeah that was interesting you could certainly see like the age range like well actually it it was still a bit mixed all around really some people really got it and like you had the old person who just wasn't for them which it's it's gonna be because it's yeah and totally different views like you could tell some people were offended by the religious stuff in it just by you could tell from their forms but um uh where was i going (laughs) um but the 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 other thing was that um i think majority wise it was this sort of you can go further i I like this bit do more of that um which is good because um that's what we did exactly Um, what we did actually that's what we wanted to do as well yeah we just didn't want we also wanted to make sure that we were going to we wanted it to make sure that it's going to be accessible and that we're going to get lots of people to come and see it because that's what we want in a show yeah um but it was good to know that we can actually push it to the lengths that we were we were more comfortable we were comfortable doing yeah we wanted it to be dark and that threw threw up the other problem of uh making a dark show that does revolve around 12 year olds yeah you've got to be careful <laughs> yeah because obviously they're not going to go out effing and blinding it every no. turn we do have one swear one word. swear word in the show used for a very specific reason but apart from that they their language is very childlike yeah um so you can't that's you we can't use language as a shock factor well you can in the what we're talking about so we just made things really we made things a lot more extreme um the view the views of the children got stronger yeah, and also we we were able to use their childish innocence to hide yeah. a lot of the shocking things. Like, they can say things in a certain tone and way. And it can mean way. something else. Yeah, and it can be perfectly charming until you go, Wow. Oh my God, they just said that. Like, yeah. if I was going to say that, yeah. people would stop. If I said that in a coffee shop, someone would stop and say... You can't well, do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the that is the really awesome thing about having um for having adults playing children um is that they can just these like kids can just say these things and if if an adult did it in the show you just you you would it would make it so much more shocking because because you know they don't know what they're saying and why it's yeah. so awful you can really access some really really scary views which in the end makes it more shocking yeah. in a lot of ways yeah because these children are obviously just saying what they've been told. Yeah. And they don't know how crazy and scary it is. <laughs> yeah, they don't totally understand it. Yeah. Uh, but they're totally on board with it. Yeah. Which is worrying. Yeah. Um, So we did Lewisham, we did that. Uh, we got feedback. We made 
quite a few changes before going to the Etc. Theatre mm-hmm. in Camden uh, to do it again. Um, mm, a few script changes. Yeah. And lyric changes, not nothing musical. Major. I don't think. No, nothing really with music. Little, like little tweaks and things. Yeah, a few things. Uh, mostly bringing out the darkness, like we just said. Yeah. Uh, mainly, one of the big changes. Well, it's actually a tiny change. Was to change one lyric in the first song. Yeah. Uh, to because in Lewisham we found that people found it very funny, but it took them a while to find it funny. Yeah. Um. I think people weren't sure if they, they were allowed sure. to yeah, find it funny. Yeah, they weren't sure if they were allowed to laugh. They didn't know. They weren't ready. Like, because it, it's this this children at a Christian camp thing. You're not sure. It's kind of like you're not re- sure if you're if, if you're allowed. Is this are we allowed to laugh yet? Like, is this a bit funny? And you're not really sure where you stand. So we decided to make that very clear that yes, it's okay. We are joking. Like, we're well, not joking, but we are. You you can laugh at this. Like, yeah, this because is- in Lewisham, the first uh, joke as such comes in the first number towards the end of it and it's more subtle it's not it's not exactly a subtle joke but no. people weren't sure if it was meant to be a joke yeah or if it was just something we'd phrased slightly oddly yeah so people weren't sure so we went back and one of the first lyrics in that song we changed uh to be a joke yeah to make to be a very clear joke to just... show from the very start yeah that's a joke this is funny, which then in Camden led to people laughing, people all the way laughing <laughs> at the end of the song and thereon because people then knew that straight it's... away that was definitely meant to be yeah. a joke. That was a joke. Yeah, everything you think is a joke is a joke. Yeah, it's, it's like you guide the audience, and 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 that's that was really useful um, for us to do because you just make it. You're literally saying from the get go, we are. Gonna, like this is going to be funny. You can't laugh. It's okay. Yeah, and I think it got rid of a lot of awkwardness for the aud- audience. Yeah, that unsureness was yeah. wiped out very quickly. Yeah, so it, you're instantly going, "Yep, yeah, it's okay. Go with it," and everyone does, and it gets them straight on board with you when you do when you start like that. Everyone's and everybody wants to like be on board at that point. So. Yeah, and I think it considering we changed for that change, it was two words yeah literally two words two and it words made we changed so and it changed the entire first half of the show yeah got everyone on board a lot quicker and jokes that were kind of going over people's heads because people were looking they were waiting they were expecting and looking for the next funny moment um people were seeing were picking up on all of them and no, nothing was going over people's heads so you, that was really useful yeah and yeah it was even stronger mm-hmm. the reception that Camden uh, yeah. went even better. We we're very pleased with that. Yeah. So now we've just released this CD, mm-hmm. uh, which we've spent the last few months Perfecting. putting together. Yeah. Um. So that's for release now. We're hoping to go to Edinburgh with the show. Yeah. Because that was always our aim to take it to Edinburgh. We wrote a show specifically for an Edinburgh audience. A lot yeah. more. It's one act, uh, obviously for Edinburgh. Uh. It's quite cutting, it's quite... It's fast-paced. Fast, yep, it's dark. Fast, funny and slick and dark. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) so that's where we're planning to go with it next. Um, So hopefully that's told you a bit about our process with this show. Yeah, I don't think... I think process is... Certainly you have to tailor the process to the show that you're doing. Um, But a lot of the things that we've mentioned can be applied um, to... Any, any any show you're writing, any musical you're writing. Really. Yeah, this is in no way our expert advice on how to write a musical. <laughs> you will find your own way, but yeah. uh, hopefully knowing our process will help you with some things, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, other things, maybe not. Uh, but it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. <laughs> I think it Worth takes it. a lot of luck. Yeah, I think I do think there's luck involved. It's it's you've got so many things need to line up. You need to have a story that people want. You need to have the you need to be working with people that get it and want to do the same thing. Um, and then and have time to do the yeah, same thing. Yeah, and have time to because it takes a lot of time. You can have someone that really wants to do it and is really great, but if they don't have the time to commit to it, yeah, you could be working on this show for a substantial amount of time. Yeah, and going not very far. Yeah, you have to be willing to literally take the time with it because you need to it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of um agonizing over small things and you've got to just really be brutal about stuff some things like they're good and but they've just got to go because they don't work and you've just got to say let's just cut it yeah 
so yeah really honest with yourself like mm-hmm. would you see this show yeah like really would that's... you see this show and if you would would you enjoy it yeah like and you've got to be honest like well when you're making any piece of, piece of theater you have to do that but yeah. i think musical theater is slightly less objective than other th- yeah. forms of theater i think it's you can generally see what's a good piece yeah, and I think what's it's, a bad piece. Yeah, I think piece. it is a lot clearer. It's, it's unusual. It's, it, either everybody loves it or like you might get a couple of people who are like, yeah, it's good, it's okay, but it's generally very clear if it's good or bad. Yeah, you can't you can't please everyone ever, but um, I think with a musical, you can, you can see if it's working or not, whereas mm-hmm. certain plays on certain subjects will just be the response will be more varied and mm-hmm. it just always is yeah that's true um yeah so that's that um yeah. please stay listening we'll be bringing out more podcasts if you've got any questions contact us yeah um uh, we're always looking for new shows if you've got something that you think's a great idea yeah get in touch why not yeah <laughs> um so yeah we're bethan and dan british is it British Exist (laughs) Theatre. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Cool. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Don't forget it's not a Jesus camp. A Jesus camp. Yeah.